super excited this week, get to do a wood project. Are you sure? I hate you. What I've got here is a piece of redwood burl I picked up at a salvage yard a couple of years ago. And I think it's going to be perfect for this project because what I want to do is marry some wood and resin together. What you can see is that we've got a piece of wood that is now three inches square and ten inches long that sort of craggles off here into the distance. And what we're going to do is we're going to make this 13 inches long maybe and we're going to fill this section up with resin. It's interesting because this was supposed to be redwood burl but that's pretty straight grain. So, I guess the whole thing's not burled. It's still really pretty though. So now we've got to build a form for the red. That works fantastically. So, cut it into four inch strips on the table saw I use a lot of hot glue during this process. I don't want the resin to leak out. Hot glue's cheap. And then you have to wait a little bit because the glue has to dry. And then what you want to do is you want to go back over it and look for places where there's gaps. So let's take a couple minutes and talk about the next step. What I'm going to be ultimately building is a light. It's a lamp. And so clear resin doesn't look good with a lamp. It doesn't diffuse properly. What you see is a single point of light in the resin. It's not interesting. It can be pretty, but it's not interesting. And it doesn't really work for a light. So what you want to do is you want to diffuse that. What I want, bubbles, and I want cracks in the resin. So we actually are doing something sort of counterintuitive. We want our resin to overheat. Because of that, I am using polyester resin today. And I'm using polyester resin because it doesn't have a set formula. Epoxy resin is a set formula. It is always one to one or one to three or whatever the set formula is. Polyester resin, on the other hand, the formula is variable based on the amount of catalyst you put in. So what we're going to do is we're going to superheat our resin and make it bubble and crack and create lots of interesting ways for the light to bounce off of it. And because it is just awful stuff, a uh, full respirator is absolutely necessary. The ratio is 1 to 100. You use 1% of the volume in catalyst. So since we want to superheat it, we're going to go crazy. We're going to do like 10 to 1. Milliliters will make that a whole lot easier to manage than ounces will. So that's where we're going to go with the metric system today. I know, and the Europeans cheered. So that is 750 milliliters. And today I'm going to be using this magenta dye. It's actually alcohol ink. And I think it'll give a really cool look. And then we're going to add way more catalyst than we should. I'm going to add almost the entire bottle. I want to darken this a little bit. So I'm going to add some 
just resin pigment dye. Should make it a little bit darker, hopefully. Ooh, I'm liking that. Okay, now bubbles are not the enemy this time, so I'm going to just pour it in and let as many bubbles form as possible. So what's happening is the resin is actually seeping into the cracks here around the edges and the volume's going down. And so it's a little lower than I need it to be, so I'm going to mix up just a little bit more and pour it on top. Crazy. Dang. It looks really I've pretty. never used an entire bottle of Catalyst. Wow. But you can see on the surface it's already starting to harden. It looks really, really pretty. I only poured this like six minutes ago. Wow. Yeah, it normally takes a lot longer, but I think we're going to get lots of cool cells and bubbles and cracks. And a lousy resin pour. It's going to be one of the worst. <laughs> it's completely dry. It actually only took a couple hours to dry, but this is the next day. You know we overheated it. I'm hoping for a lot of bubbles. I'm hoping for a lot of cracks. I'm hoping for all the things I never want in a resin cure. So far, so good. I won't know till we square up one of these sides, I guess. So all we're trying to do is get rid of scratches from the tools, right? So we get rid of marks from the tools. We get a uniform set of scratches with 150 grit. And then all we're going to do for the rest of the time is basically just get rid of the scratches from the last layer. So that we're using 220, get rid of scratches from 150, and then we'll go 300, 450, 600, 800. And all we're doing each time is getting rid of the scratches from the last layer. So these are my micro mesh. Um, they have their own grit chart that starts at 1500 and goes to 12,000. Um, those aren't actual grits, they're their own numbers. But if I go through this system from brown to gray, I usually get a beautiful looking finished product. 4,000, I'm starting to really get a nice shine here. It doesn't take very long. A lot of people shy away from hand sanding, but hand polishing, hand sanding, it really doesn't take very long. Again, all you're doing is getting rid of the scratches from the previous grit. All right, here we are on 8,000. We are definitely getting to a mirror-like shine. Woo, that is beautiful. This is, this is great. This is better than I expected. Yeah, I'm super happy with that. I even like this dark area. I'm not sure what's happening here. Some sort of reaction with the redwood to the polish. And it almost looks like charred wood. <laughs> I mean, you can't get any better than that for a torch. Okay, welcome to my super janky drill setup. This is an 11 inch extension for a one and three eighths inch Forstner bit that I'm going to use to drill a hole down past the wood into the resin. I just realized that I have no idea how far down to drill. <laughs> Lucky for us, Redwood's really soft. And smells like we hit resin. And the last thing we're going to do is add a finish. I'm going to use this walnut oil and so I'm going to just try to get it on the wood here. I don't think it'll damage the resin. I just think we've already gotten the resin as good as it's going to look. A 
really darkens up the redwood. I've been trying to come up with the best method for lighting it. I didn't want a cord. So what I've done is I turned a plug on the lathe that holds a flashlight and it goes up into the bottom of the torch and it's a friction fit. And as you can see, it actually works really well. This flashlight just happens to be the strongest one we had. Um, I found them on Amazon. You can get a small flashlight that's like 300 lumens. It's LED for like five bucks. My version of a Minecraft redstone torch. I think I got that right. I think it came out really good. It's got the blocky look to it. It lights up and I love the way the resin looks. It's super deep. It's got a lot of, it's got so much depth to it because of all the cracks and the overheating. Yeah, one of the worst resin pours I've ever done um, and it just turned out exactly the way I wanted it. I really like the way this turned out. If you liked it, if you could share it, that would actually help me out a lot. Thank you very much for watching and I will catch you guys next time.